better come on out of prayer man, in case I need to preach. Amen. <laughs> they're still going at it. And uh, I'm glad they're still going at it. And if you have your Bibles tonight, I want you to turn with me to Joshua chapter 6. And, and I know I'm supposed to be preaching through the book of John. But Joshua chapter 6, we're going to look at a few things tonight <clears throat> as we look into the Word of God. I'm not going to read it first. I'm going to pray first. I'm going to pray first, and I'm going to preach this just a little bit different tonight. Can y'all handle that? You know, Baptists, they get all out of character, character if, they don't, if, they, if they get out of their routine. And, uh, but we're going to get, hey, I, I keep you shuffled out pretty good, don't I? But uh, we need to look at a few things tonight as we look into the Word of God. Now, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask God's blessing upon, upon this service tonight. I don't have any notes. He told me, just you read, and he'll talk. That's what he said. So I'm counting on that, amen. And uh, Lord, we come to you thanking you for your kindness and goodness. And Lord, uh, this, this, this is your word. Lord, this is your word. This is you, your spoken word. And Lord, it's the Logos, it's the Ramos, it's all together, it's all you. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, to be in the depths of this word tonight, that you will speak to your people. And Lord, start with me first. Help me to see things, Lord, maybe I hadn't seen before. And Lord, help me, to, help me to get a hold of things maybe I've never seen, gotten a hold of before. But Lord, I want you to ask you to do your work tonight as only you can. I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, to do its convicting and convincing and encouraging work tonight. Lord, I can't do it. I can't change any man. I can't change any woman. And Lord, you're the only one that can do that. I can't encourage people like you can, Lord. Only you can do those things. But tonight, Lord, you do your work. You do your work as only you can. I pray for those men that are still praying in the back. I thank you, Lord, that they have so much that they want to pray about. And, Lord, that they're a body of, are in unity together back here in the back. And, Lord, there's, there's a time of confession and repentance, Lord, that we needed tonight. And, Lord, we just lift this all night all up into your hands. Thank you for our youth next door. Lord, thank you for so many that's taking care of our children next door. I want to thank you for them. And I ask you to add to that. Lord, we, that. Lord, maybe there's others that you've pricked their hearts to work in vacation Bible school, Lord, but they haven't stepped forward tonight. I pray, Lord, that you'll tug upon their hearts tonight and help them to see Kevin and Kaylin, Lord, and get signed up for that. But, Lord, I pray for 300 kids here. Lord, this is a community effort. Lord, this, uh, for these kids, Lord, there's, there's kids in this community that will never be in church if it wasn't for Vacation Bible School, ever. Lord, this may be the only chance that we get to share the gospel to them. This may be it. So, Lord, help us to be sensitive to that as we pass out those flyers and as we, as we invite people. And Lord, that your will will be done. So, Lord, we lift this night up in your hands. If someone here don't know you as Savior, Lord, do you work tonight. Be with the youth tonight in a special way. I pray that you'll sit down with them. Thank you for such a wonderful church camp. Thank you so much for saving 13 kids. And, Lord, for all the other decisions that were made. Lord, it's amazing how you can take a handful and make so much work out of that. Lord, we, just, we praise you tonight. We honor you with our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. I'm going to take my little jacket off tonight. I'm already kind of worked up hot, amen. And uh, if you, if, let, me, let, me, let me start in tonight. We're going to start in Joshua chapter 6, and uh, we're going to start in verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None, none went out and none came in. So, so I want you to see here tonight, the children of Israel have come out of bondage, Amen. 40 years. Amen. They've come out of bondage. Amen. Amen. Y'all look at me. It's just men walking in. It's going to be okay. And when the saints come marching in. <laughs> Praise God. We've got men that want to pray. Amen. But they, they've got Jericho in a siege. And when you put a, when you put a, a, a city in a siege, especially in the day and age in which we live, you look all the way up even through the Civil War. And when you put a city in a siege, you cut off their food supply, you cut off their communication. You, they can't come in, they can't come out, and they're in a desperate spot, amen? 
and uh, they're, they're ripe for disease, they're ripe for a failure, and uh, they've got Jericho in a siege, and all they've done is done what the God told them to do. Amen. Here's Joshua on the scene. Joshua has took the place of Moses. Uh, that was a for, uh, it was foreordained to do so. And uh, Joshua is God's man. Amen. amen. Y'all with me? And I say amen. amen. I want you to get a good good analogy of what's going on. And he says, and the children of Israel, none went out, and none came in. So they had it blocked off. They had them surrounded. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into, into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. They're all yours. And he said, he said they're, under, they're, 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 they're captive. Now look at verse 3. And you shall compass the city. All you men of war, go around the city once, one time. Thus shalt thou do it six for six days. So one time. They're going to go around the city one time a day for six days. Y'all with me now? Say amen. amen. Now you see what's going on. Now some of you say, well, you know, you, you talk about when they walked around Jericho and Jericho fell. A lot of, listen, a lot of people are brand new. A lot of people have never grown up under the word. They don't know about Jericho. That's why I'm preaching on it tonight. Amen. amen. And you need to understand that. And you need to understand why it's formulated like this, that you can't just presume that somebody's going to know what we're talking about. That's why we preach the word, amen? And we're instant in season and out of season. He said, you'll do that for once, once a day for six days. Now, seven, and, now watch. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of rams, ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times and the priest shall blow with the trumpet. So he said, now the seventh day, you're going to go around the city seven times, amen, and, 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 and going to come past the city, and the priest shall blow the trumpets during that time. Now, why are they going to do that here in verse 5? And it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, and all the people shall shout with a great shout, and, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend upon every man straight before him. Y'all with me? Say amen. Now he gonna, he's told them what to do, and he's told them what's going to take place when they do that, when they're, when they're operating out of obedience. Are y'all with me? Amen. He tells them exactly what to do, and they go do it. Now, I want you to see it's a little, it's, it, it, it. They're staying the course. And in verse 6, now you got Joshua's man. Here he is. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priest and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of rams, horns before the ark of the Lord. Now here, here comes the ark of the Lord. What's the first thing that, oh, that, he, that Joshua does? He, he, he directs, he does it exactly the way God wants it done. They're bringing the Ark of the Covenant in, which is what's going to be set in the tabernacle, which at that time it's a tent, and, that, and it's in the Holy of Holies, and that's, it, it, it's, it, it, they're going to bring it before. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to go ahead and tell you here, right here tonight. God is serious about his sanctuary. I'll just go ahead and tell you that. He's serious about it. He's serious about what goes on in the sanctuary. So here, here he's bringing the sanctuary. And, 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 and here's God's man. He's prayed up. He's been with Moses some 40 years. He's been at his right hand. He has learned. He's been in the hardest of battles. He's been under the toughest of circumstances. He's been pressed down into the olive press where there's nothing but oil coming out. He's been through the ringer. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Now he knows what to do, and he's going to do it God's way. And here he comes. Here he comes in verse 6 and verse 7. He said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city, and let, and let him that is armed pass before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. Very important. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. When were they supposed to do that? Well, they're going to do that on the seventh day. And they're going to they're do it seven times and the priests shall blow with the trumpets in verse 4. 
He's doing exactly what God tells him to do. And what God says and what God tells us to do is what God expects us to do. And we are not to deviate from that. We're not to turn to the left. We're not to turn to the right. We're to stay with him even if we think we got a better plan. We need to stay with God's plan. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Now watch. And the armed men went before the priest that blew with the trumpets. And the re rearward, the, 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 the back people came after the ark, the priest going on and blowing of the trumpets, just like God told him. And Joshua had commanded, as Joshua, and, and Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth. They used duct tape. Until the day that I bid you shout, then you shall shout. He told them, all be quiet. We're going we're, we're to be quiet. We're going to do what God tells us. Amen. We're all walking. Two million people being quiet. Miracle. And the ark of the Lord can pass the city. I'm telling you, God's serious about the sanctuary of God. I'm just telling you. You need to, you need, you need to get your eyes on that. He's serious about his church. Are, are y'all listening? And the ark of the Lord could pass the city going it about at once. And they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose up early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. And seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram horns before the ark of the Lord went out continually. He's doing exactly what God tells him. Amen? Amen? And he blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went went before them, but the rearward came after the ark of the Lord, the priest going on and the blowing with the trumpets. Verse 14, and the second day, they can pass the city once. Why? Because that's what God told them to do. Amen? Amen. And, and they returned into the camp, so they did this for six days. Why? Because he told him back up in verse 3 to do this once for six days. God, God's man is doing what God wants him to do. Amen? And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early at about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times, just like God told them, verse 15. Only on the day that they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Don't you love the way God operates? And the city shall be accursed. That's a bad day for the city. That means it's never going to be a city again. Y'all with me? It's a curse. Why? Because the Babylonians is where all false, false prophets come from. All false idols. All, all that came out of Babylon and God's done with it. Amen? When God's done, he's done. Amen? And the city shall be accursed, even in it, and all the things there. So everything, the whole city is all going to be, everything in it is going to be cursed too. And it says, it says, and, and, and all that are therein to the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that was sent. And you and any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing. Keep yourselves from the accursed thing. Keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest you, lest, lest you make yourselves accursed. Lest you make yourselves accursed. Lest you make yourselves accursed. I'm sure you had to say it multiple times to the two million uh, Jews there. Amen? Amen? And when you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and then trouble it. So he tells them, don't, don't, don't take anything out of that city. Not everything's going to be cursed. Now, he's going to consecrate some things for the sanctuary. But he tells them, don't you take anything out of that city because the city's accursed. Everything that's going to come out of it is a curse. And they, if you're with me, say amen. amen. But all the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass of iron are consecrated. Now, notice that word consecrated. You may have a different translation. It comes from a, from a uh, Hebrew word, Kadesh. It means a sacred place or a thing. It means, it means sanctity. It means dedicated. It means hallow. It means holiness. Amen? Amen. So it, it's consecrated. He said, all the silver and all the gold, the vessels of brass and iron are consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. 
Amen? The sanctuary is important. The church is important. Amen? Y'all with me? So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted when they heard the great shout, and the wall fell down flat. So that the people went to the city and every man straight before him and they took the city. Never fired a shot. Amen. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both men and women, young and old, ox, sheep, donkey, with the edge of a sword. Why? Because everything's accursed. And Joshua had had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house and bring out this the woman and all that she has as we swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought her out of all of her kindred and left them outside the camp of Israel. Amen. They done what they they told they told Rahab they would they would do this and they're do, they're doing what they said they would do. Amen. Amen. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein, only the silver and the gold and the vessels of the brass and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. Why did they do that? Because that's what God told them to do. Amen. Amen. And Joshua saved Rahab the heart of the life and her father and her household and all that she had and she dwelleth in Israel even to this day, the day that this is wrote out of Joshua. Amen? Because she hid her messengers from uh, which Joshua sent to spy out of Jericho. Now watch. And Joshua adjured them, commanded them at that time saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that rises up and builds this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof, his firstborn and his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua and his fame was noised abroad through all the country. Now how powerful is that praise tonight? God told him what to do and they praised, amen? And that city was cursed and it will never be built back again. If it was, it's going to be cursed again. Because that man's going to be cursed that did it. Y'all with me? Amen. Now, I want you to look with me in Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. They done done what God told them not to do. Where's Joshua? He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. But here we are. We got, we got, we, he, he says, he says, for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zadai, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. He took of the accursed thing. He took of the accursed thing. He took of the accursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. So here, here we are. We got, we got one man that done exactly what God told him not to do, but God's angry at all of Israel. I remember when my son played football, he... He, he, uh, he, he was a running back, but when they did kick off, him and two other guys were back here in the back, and, and, and sometimes he would receive the ball and run. The other two were the speedsters. He was kind of a, he, he, he wasn't quite as speedy, but, but he, he had a little quickness. But anyway, he was back there. The ball came to him. And it, he made a beautiful catch, and he ran down through there. He, he, he rolled and about 50-something yards down the field. They got him down. Sands went nuts. Then all of a sudden, he looked in the backfield, and there was a yellow flag holding by number 17. He ran 50-something yards and set up for a touchdown. Probably could have won the game. But one person that knew they shouldn't be holding held and the whole team got penalized. That's what happened here. One person. 
knew beyond a shadow of a doubt. I knew I shouldn't have done that. There's so many people think they can sin that God's just going to forgive them. But God tells, do not sin and do not sin. And, and they stay in that sin. Then they justify that sin. Then they make excuses for that sin. Then they try to confess the sin. But they never repent from the sin. And they, 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 that's kind of where Achan was. You can justify anything. And Joshua sent men, verse 2, to Jericho to Ai, which beside beth Aven of the east side of Bethel, and, and, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said, Let not all the people go up, but let two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. Make not all the people to labor there, for they are but a few. There's, a, there, there's only like 12,000 of them. So there went up, and they went up there to the people, about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. So here, here's 3,000 of them going up, and the men of Ai smote them, about 36 men. And they chased them, and, and from there the gate even to Shebron, and, and smote them in going to down, whereof the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Why? Because, because they whipped God's people. And they weren't supposed to be able to do that. But what had happened? What had happened? Had one. Had one. That done what God told him not to do. And Joshua rent his clothes. He tore his clothes and he fell to the earth and face upon the ark of the Lord until the evening tide and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. They, they, went, into, they, they went into a time of prayer and fasting and, and, and getting right with the Lord because they knew something was wrong. Amen? What was God's man doing? He was praying. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, Wherefore hast thou at all brought these people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we be content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan? Hey, Lord, did you just bring us across the river just to destroy us over here? We've been better off staying in the wilderness. And, O oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it, and they shall... They shall ever on us around which means they shall surround us and cut off our name from the earth and what will they do unto thy great name listen they're going to compact us they're going to destroy us and you're hey, listen, we're supposed to be your people we're supposed to have your hand of power upon us. what are they going to be saying about us they're, it's all going to get out and we're going to be weak and they're all going to attack us and your great name will be destroyed y'all with me Verse 10, and the Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up, get up. Where liest thou thus upon thy faith? Why, why are you lying on your face? Get up. Now watch, y'all with me? Say amen. Verse 11, Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them, for they have even taken to the accursed thing and have also stolen and, and, dis, and dissembled also and they have put it even among their own stuff. So God tells his man what's going on. Why? Because God's man's on his face towards the Lord. He says, get up. Let me tell you what's took place. Somebody's took the accursed thing and they even got it hidden down in, the, in their stuff in their tent. Anybody home? Y'all stay with me. And in verse 12, therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but they but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will it be, neither will I be with you anymore except you destroy the accursed from among you. That's pretty tough, ain't it? God said, unless you discord that, you're going to have to destroy him. Pretty tough, ain't it? That's the way old Satan operates, though. He don't, he don't show you all that when he strikes that, co that, that covetousness in your heart to look at 
what you shouldn't be doing. Amen? Anybody home? I mean, we talk about all the things. We, we talk about sin. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let me see if I can find it right quick. It says, it says verse 9, you know that if, uh, that you know that under, you know, you, know you not, I get it out. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Who's the unrighteous? Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. We always talk about that. That's easy to talk about. If you're not fornicating. Hello? Sex outside the realms of marriage. I mean, hello? Nor, nor, nor idolaters. It's easy to talk about that. I mean, who's going to get in front of an idol and worship it? But everything you put in front of the Lord is... is, is is an idol. Amen. Nor abuse, uh, uh, nor nor adulterers, uh, uh, extramarital affairs. Hello, that's easy. To, hey, if you're not in an extramarital affair, it don't bother you one bit. Amen. Nor infamous, that's the homosexuals. Nor abuser of sales with mankind, that's sodomizers. I mean, we we can get on there and just camp out all day long. But what about these others? What about a thief? I mean, you still, if you steal hours from your employer, you're a thief. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, you're a thief, amen? I mean, there was this, I remember this old coach, he, around the year 2000, there was a coach, and I'm not going to tell you what school he's from, but he, he laughed because uh, his uncle was the treasurer at one of these churches, and after they took up the offering and went back and counted, he'd go back with his uncle and go count the money, and he'd keep out a 20 every service. Hello? You think that don't happen? That's stealing. That's embezzling. Matter of fact, I think it says it right here. It says, nor, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers. I mean, there's people just go off at the drop of a hat just like a bomb out of anger. We don't ever talk about that. Why? Because it's uncomfortable. Amen? I mean, you can lose all your joy on Highway 45 or Dick Cashman Bypass, amen? Nor extortioners. That guy was an extortion. He, he embezzled money from the church. They shall, they shall, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. They're sins. And, and those sins separate us. And you can't hide sin you can't hide sin in the ground far enough that God can't find it. He knows exactly where it's at. He knew it. He knew you put it. He, he knew that, that it was put there in that tent. He knew exactly how deep it was, knew exactly what he had. He's fixing to spill it out. And, and let me say this in Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsakes, that's repentance, them shall have mercy. That's a good day, amen? But there are so many people who don't think they have to confess or repent. And then what that does, it mocks God. Galatians 6, 7, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whoso, whatsoever a man sows, that also shall he reap. Church, God will not be mocked. He will not be mocked. When you go back to our text tonight, I don't know where I got down to. Somebody help me. Verse 15, let me start there. Anybody with me? 13, thank you. It says, Up to sanctify the people and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou cannot stand before thine enemies until they take away the accursed thing from among them. They could not stand. You know, and I believe God, you know, I believe there's churches that, that have had so much sin that they didn't deal with. That I, I, believe, I, believe, I believe sin can ruin a church. I really do believe that. And you see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 when, when one of the leaders of the church was having an extramarital affair with his mother-in-law. And he, and he told us to keep the, get the leaven out of the loaf that's polluting the, the loaf of bread. 
So God is serious about sin. Amen? And in verse 14, In the morning, therefore, you shall, you, you shall be brought according to your tribes, and shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall do according to the families thereof, and the family that the Lord shall take shall come to the households, and the households which the Lord shall take shall come to the man by man. So they're going tent to tent, out, man to man, family to family. They're, going, they're looking for it, amen? The cursed thing, amen? amen? That's what they're doing, all right? In verse 15, it shall be that, it, that, that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, and he and all that has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has wrought folly to Israel. So they're, they, they're going to destroy this man. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought to Israel by the tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken, and he brought the families of Judah, and he took the family of the Zerites and brought the family of the, of the Zerites man by man, and, and Zebdi was taken. And he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of, of Zebdi, the son of Zerah, the tribe of Judah, was taken. So here, here's, here's Achan. He's, it's his turn. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua, said, I indeed I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel, and thus, thus have I done. So he's confessed. Amen? Now, verse 21. And when I saw among the spoils of goodly Babylonish garments, so he's got this pretty Babylonish garment that he saw, he just had to have it. And the 200 shekels of silver and the wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. He, this silver and gold, the, the, he coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of the tent and the silver under it. So he told them exactly where it was, told them where it was hid, but God already knew where it was hid. But Joshua had to go find it. Can you imagine how much time that had to take to do all? Two million t people. 12 tribes are going through them. And the man of God is wasting all his time on one sinner that has brought destruction to the house of Israel. You know, it's amazing. People teach, they, 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 they pray all week long, they study, they teach... They, they get things ready. They teach Sunday school and they put their hearts into it and they grow into it. And they, everything people do, they, they grow into it. And, and, and every person that has things to do, they put their hearts into it. And then you got one or two that just want just to live in sin. And they think everybody else don't know it. Amen? Anybody home? It, there's, there's three people that already know it. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So you're already in trouble. Amen? And when you have sin, you need, if you confess that sin, sin and repent from it, and there's, then, then if there's nothing else hid in it, then God will release you. But so many times we, there are people they hide things in that. Like Achan. Hello. I told you God's just going to tell me what to say. Amen. In verse 20, 22, And Joshua sent messengers, and they ran into the tent. Behold, it was hid in the tent, the silver and under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them into Joshua and all the children of Israel. And they laid them out before the Lord. They took that. They took, they took the things that were supposed to be put into the, the treasury and they laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all the all of Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, 
Zerah and, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his son and his daughters and his oxen and his, donk, his donkeys and his sheep and his tent and all that he had and all that he had and all that he had and they brought them into the valley of Achor. I, I want to tell you something. It ain't, sin is just not worth it because it will affect your family. It will affect everything about you. It will affect every aspect of you. And sin will hurt everybody if it's not confessed, if it's not lined out, if it's not repented from, I mean totally repented from, and walk the straight walk, then it will, it will come back to bite you in another form. It's going to come right on down the line and keep biting you. What you sow is what you're going to reap. Just let that soak in a minute. Verse 24. And Joshua and all Israel was with him, took Achan, the son of Zerai, the silver and the garment and the wedge of the gold and his sons and his daughters and, his, and the oxen and the donkeys and the sheep and the tent and all that he had. And they brought them to the valley of Achor. I thought I'd just say it one more time. All that he had. Are y'all getting it? You're not going to get by with it. It's not going to get, that's why when I do something wrong, I just come on and fess on up. Amen? Amen? I just do it. It's hard sometimes. But I just, I've said things I thought I should have never said that. I just, I can't wait to get back to the next service and say, hey, <clears throat> I'm sorry. But I am. Because it bothered me all week. I hope you're sorry for your sin. Because if it is, the Holy Spirit's doing that. I hope you're just not sorry you get caught. I want you to see what the man of God said. I mean, don't you know you had more things to do than have to deal with one person trying to find out what all went on? I wonder how long this took them. I mean, you spent a lot of you spent a lot of time trying to find sin. I wonder how many months this took them. You ever thought about that? I mean, it just didn't happen a day or two. I mean, we're talking about 12 tribes, 2 million people. Door to door. Household to household. I'll just go ahead and tell you, the man of God's got more things to do than that. I'll just go ahead and tell you that. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee in this day. And all of Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after, after they had stoned them with stones. And they, raised o- and they raised over him a great heap of stones until this day. So the Lord turned from his fierceness and anger. Wherefore the name of that place was called Valley of Achor in, unto this day. So God was appeased. Church, God's not going to be mocked. You can't bury sin deep enough. You've got, to get, you've got to truly get it out, and you've got to truly repent from it. In Acts chapter 5, there was another instance that, in verse 1, you don't have to turn there because I'm closing. There's a certain man named Ananias and, with Sapphira, and Sapphira, his wife, they sold a possession. They had seen, they, they had seen Barnabas sell a track of land and he brought it and laid it down at the church and they were so impressed because so many people talked about it. And they, I, I, guess, I, I guess you could say that Barnabas was kind of, they kind of glorified him. We're doing it, and they kind of wanted the same glory, so they conjured up a little lie, just a little lie, just a little one. You know, when you don't tell the whole truth, it's a lie. When you hold back from the information, don't get it all out, it's a lie. It's still a lie. And a certain man named Ananias of Christ and his wife sold a possession. They kept back part of the price. His wife also, being, being aware uh, to it, uh, brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Peter said, Ananias, 
Why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the price of the land? Now, how did, how did Peter know that? Because Peter had been with Jesus. Peter's anointed. He's God's man. Amen? Amen? I mean, he made some mistakes along the way, but he's still God's man. Amen? I tell you what, a doctorate in the school of hard knocks is not a, it's not a bad doctorate to have. As long as you can confess and truly repent. Amen? He says, so why'd you, why did you hold that part of the price of the land? While it remained, it was, was it not thine own? And after you sold it, was it not there in their own power? What has thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Has, thou has not lied unto men, but unto God. You've lied to God about it. And Ananias, hearing these words, he fell down and he gave up the ghost. And, and great fear came upon all of them that heard these things. So, go, so he died. Because he lied to God. Lied to the Holy Spirit. Well, I sold this land for twenty thousand dollars. Really, he sold it for forty. And he brings it here. I I sold this land for twenty here. Give me some glory. But he really sold it for forty. He lied. It's a lie. Amen. And every good man, he has to drag his wife right through the sin. Hello. Here it is, verse 6. And the young man arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. It was about the space of three hours afterwards, and his wife, not knowing what had done, came in. Here comes his wife. She has not a clue what went. She's clueless. She's clueless. But he's done set her up. It was about the space of three hours after his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. Peter said unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for this much. And she said, Yes, for this much. Sold it for $20,000. i am I'm, I'm making that up. Amen? But really, they sold it for forty. And Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed to, together to tempt the Spirit of God? Now, that's pretty dangerous. See... God's house is not a playhouse. Right. See? God's house is God's house. Amen. It's a place of love and restoration, hospital for sinners, a place where the Word of God's preached. Sometimes we get right with the Lord, God grabs a hold of us. Amen? It's a lot of things, but it's not a playhouse. It's not a drama house. It's not a place. It's not a place to play with people. Amen. And in verse ten, then she fell down straight way to her feet and yielded up the ghost. She died. The young, young man came in and found her, found her dead, carried her forth, buried her by her husband, and great fear came upon all the church and upon the many that heard these things. There was sin in the camp, buried. God told them not to do that. Don't take of the accursed thing. He tells us, church, stay out of these things. There's a guideline for preachers. I've got a guideline. 1 Timothy chapter 3, the first eight verses, is a guideline that I'm supposed to live by. After that, it's a deacon. they got a guideline that they're supposed to live by, and then it comes on down to their wives. There's a guideline. Amen? I know what the guidelines are. I, I stay within those boundaries. I, I live those guidelines. And in Peter, it says, be an examples to the flock. That's, that's, that's the way I live. But when there's playing around going on, and it affects people, God's not going to tolerate that mess. That's all I got to say tonight. I'm not talking to anybody. 
I'm not talking about an episode. I'm just saying, tomorrow morning when I get up, I'll be out on the mission. I'll be out on the field. I'll be doing what I'm called to do. And my hands will be on the plow. Anybody home? And God expects his people, the body, that's supporting, because he's the head of the church. Amen? He's the head. Now, would you want your body playing around? Would you like your feet to be playing around with somebody else's hand? Would that not be creepy? Hello? He wants you to keep your hands on the plow and move forward, don't he? He's called us not. He said, we're all part of the body. We're all necessary. Amen? He's the head. And if there's sin, you can't bear it deep enough that I don't know about it. I preach what God wants me to preach tonight. And you know what he told me? He said, you may preach, have to preach it again Sunday. I thought, well, I've never done that in 12 years. 13 years, I've never done that. As for now, I'm going to preach this again Sunday. Is that not weird? Never told me that before. He said, you may have to preach it Sunday. Okay. So I'll preach it twice. I may preach it three or four times. But when God tells me to preach it, I'm going to preach it. Amen? 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 We need to get the sin out. We need to get the sin out. And let God operate. God wants to save people. He wants to add to the church. He wants people to grow spiritually. He wants all, the, he, he, he wants all of his Bible studies at top notch. He wants it all just like he wants it. Amen? Amen. Let's pray tonight.